the 10 great records, 10 great records that I just don't listen to very much anymore for a lot of these. Um, this is uh, following Chris's thread, the 10 great records that I rarely listen to. And for me, you know, thinking about that, there's t there's a lot of records that would be considered classics that I just kind of don't get. They don't appeal to me for whatever reason. That's probably another video. Um, but 10 great records that I would put up there, you know, probably in my top 200 for sure, probably at top 100 um, in most of these cases, not all, but most of them that I just don't find myself listening to much at all, if really ever. Um, and I'm looking, I'm looking at like the last 10 to 20 years, probably the last 10 for sure. Uh, and the first one, these are in no particular order. They're literally just were lying on my floor when I picked them all up and I just took the covers off and put them back there. So they're in no particular order. But um, the first one that I want to talk about is The Cure Disintegration. I got into The Cure with, I guess it was right around the same time. I think it was, I think it was Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me first. And then standing on the beach, the singles, then head on the door um, and everything. Or head pornography had never really did much for me. But when this album came out, it was the first new Cure album that I bought. And I absolutely loved it. I mean, it's so different from Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. It took quite a while to kind of reveal what it was. And, uh, you know, it didn't even really take, take too much shape for me. It seems kind of hard to believe until some of the singles started to uh, really become videos and be in like constant rotation. Then I could kind of pick it out as far as individual songs. Before that, it seemed very much like a piece, you know, something you would listen to start to finish, which is what I do with albums anyway. But um, I just do remember though, the radio, some radio station it was late at night. I was listening, you know, I was probably 16 years old and they played Fascination Street or maybe 17. They played Fascination Street and I, I just stopped what I was doing and I absolutely loved it. I love the guitar work in there. Um, it remains a highlight on the record, but I just don't listen to it very often at all. Um, I think I've played it once in probably the last 20 years. I don't think I've played it since I picked this up on vinyl. I may have played parts of it. I might have played it once all the way through. I'm not sure. But it's just one of those records. It, it always feels like it's going to be this experience. This can be very dark. If I reach for a Cure record lately, it's uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Stay on the Beach, or uh, Head on the Door. Those are sort of my uh, go-to Cure records. But this one isn't, even though I might say that this is the best Cure album there ever was. I absolutely love it. Never play it. I am going to see if I can keep doing this. <laughs> my record room is kind of under reconstruction. It's part of the reason I'm up here doing uh, records this way in my office. Uh, this record, OK Computer, I was completely obsessed with. I love this record. I know I could quote lyrics back and forth with someone. I did when this record was new. I remember we both hated our jobs. And one of the, um, you know, one of the one of the email lines I had was a job that slowly kills you. And he responded with bruises that don't heal. I mean, we just yeah, I was listening to this all the time. Love this record. It is by far my favorite Radiohead record. I don't think Kid A comes close, personally. Um, lyrics are just, I mean, you print out these lyrics, they're going to take, you know, quite a few pieces of paper. I feel like Kid A is much more minimal that way. I have nothing against Kid A. I would put it in my top five Radiohead records for sure. I might be number two or even number two, uh, three, four, somewhere in there. But this record is just, in my mind, is head and shoulders above it. Why don't I play it anymore? I think because I played it to death. I played it so much, I don't know that it has too much more to reveal to me now. Although, you know, that was how many years ago? That was 1997. You know, I'm, I'm a quite a different person than I was then. And, uh, you know, I picked it up on vinyl and I played it, I think, just enough. And this is probably two years ago to know that I, oh, wow, yeah, this copy does sound really great. I don't think I got past probably the first side. Maybe this maybe is a double disc now, maybe the second. Um, but I just don't reach for it like I used to. And I absolutely love it, I, you know. But it's one of those records that someday, you know, I'm going to really enjoy again. It's going to hit me at the right spot. Um, part of it, I think, is I don't really like 
a lot of the the electronic direction that Radiohead went, I think they just went so far into that direction that uh, it almost I almost mourn for this kind of Radiohead because the expectations were so high with this album, and they went in a completely different direction. A great record, Kid A. I, I, I'm probably being too negative on it. I do love that record, but to me, nothing beats OK Computer. I didn't pick up that OK, not OK. Uh, I heard some song on the radio that I, you know, I used to have, I used to collect all the Radiohead bootlegs and download them. It was right around the time that Napster was like huge and would seek out all kinds of stuff. And there would, there would be a time that I would be all over that and all over that, that data leak that they had where all kinds of sessions from maybe it was all the sessions from OK Computer were released. I don't find that I'm that complete now with artists um, as far as unreleased stuff. Give me the albums, love them. Don't really need to go super deep into bootlegs anymore. Um, I know I'm probably missing out. I used to, I used to be super into that stuff, but uh, not so much. But like, I heard some song, and I can't remember what it's called now. Um, from these sessions, it was on OK, not OK, and I absolutely loved it. And the DJ's like, "Yeah, can you believe it? That wasn't good enough for uh, OK Computer." But OK Computer, I mean, yeah, you're in stiff competition. But anyway, love OK Computer seldom if ever actually play it now this is one of my favorite albums of all time too nebraska i absolutely love nebraska it's a time and a place thing for me it is it is a sunday morning record winter uh bad weather which i live in seattle now so you know i'm gonna have a lot of that come winter um but it, i savor it too some of these records i just savor i don't want to hear them all the time i don't want them to get old um, I absolutely love this. I think this is Springsteen's best record. He did an interview recently and kind of, kind of talking about like the anniversary of it and saying it was the record for him that he, he's in a way he's most proud of, or he thinks he's going to be remembered for years from now. And I, I agree. I mean, I just think it's a phenomenal record, phenomenal singer, songwriter, acoustic record for anybody that doesn't like, you know, East street band type stuff. And I was one of them for, to some extent, um, this is where it's at. This is a different kind of Springsteen. And my favorite Springsteen record and one of my favorite records of all time, I just don't play it that often. All right. Wilco being there. It feels weird to have some of these on this list because, okay, this is my favorite Wilco record. It might still be. It's between this and uh, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. But this is the one that, that I got into him with. Um, I had heard... AM, I saw them open up for Pavement on that tour. I didn't really know. I knew of Uncle Tupelo, but I wasn't into him at the time. But um, when this album came out, I had a friend that worked at, at a record store, and she gave me this copy. Um, and I just dove into it and absolutely loved it. They played Minneapolis a lot. I think I saw them two times on this tour, um, if not more. And then I saw them on... I mean, every, every tour um, that, that they did for quite a while there. Um, I've fallen off a little bit recently. I won't go see them every single time, but uh, I absolutely, yeah, this record is is where it's at for me, or it was. Um, I just feel like it's a different band. Um, Jay Bennett's influence. Uh, uh, I loved it. I loved it. I love that band. And... I can listen to Yankee Hotel Foxtrot and not feel like I'm going back into a former band, even though, you know, Bennett was all over that record. Well, it depends on who's telling the story. Uh, but this one just sounds, I love it. It's just something I don't play very often. I did play it on a road trip about a year ago and it sounded really, really good. Um, but I just don't reach for it like I will another Wilco record. They have so many now. Um, there's some that, you know, I, I don't, I, I, revisit and I find things I, I hadn't really heard before um, especially some of the later ones I do love Cruel Country a lot and I'm actually looking forward to their new one too uh, phenomenal band this is probably still my favorite it's just one I don't reach for reach for very often <sighs> again they're all they're like my favorite records okay um, let it be love the replacements they're one of the reasons I moved to Minneapolis when I went to college I know where that house is. I know where the bars are. I know the stories. I've seen, you know, Westerberg numerous times. I saw Tommy Stinson numerous times with different bands that he was in. Westerberg, you know, he, he was a little less, uh, you wouldn't see him in the bars or anything, but um, I love the replacements. I love my three favorite records are Let It Be, Tim, and Please to Meet Me, although I do love uh, I'll Shook Down quite a bit too. And the recent reimagining finding those lost tapes of don't tell a soul 
like really makes me like that record too. This is probably my favorite for the sound of it. It absolutely kills. It just smokes on vinyl. But for whatever reason, I don't really listen to it. I think it's because there's some of those punk songs in there and it doesn't really, um, like Tommy gets his tonsils out and Gary's got a boner that just sort of aren't don't really make for a cohesive listen. And I know it like the back of my hand, that's part of it too. I don't listen, I can't remember the last time I listened to this. It's probably been at least 10 years, maybe more, um, but I love it. I absolutely love Let It Be. Okay, boy, I'm showing off my pits. Uh, this one, okay, so I'm gonna get some flack for this one. Big Star's third record. I don't play it because it's not really a record. I'm, that's that's my issue with it. It's not really a record. Nobody can agree what the, what the track listing was. This version I have, I don't like. Now I've heard, I think the one that's just called Third. Uh, this is the UK one, by the way. Uh, I, I do like other versions of it. I love the material, but it's hard for me when I don't know what album, like, I, I guess I'm, I'm not a rules guy, but yet I kind of am. I want the art, artist's vision of something. I don't really feel like I have it with this. But some of those other configurations of songs work better than the one I have, which is which kind of emphasizes more of the rock songs and not really the really slow, serious songs, which I think are kind of where it's at with this record. Um, but yeah, surprises some people I know. Um, but if I'm going to reach for a big star record, I do like again, I love this material, a Sunday morning kind of stuff, but I'll probably reach for number one record or Radio City before I reach for third. Someday I think I'll change that. Alright. Another another Minneapolis record, Minneapolis artist, Prince, Purple Rain. Um, I resisted as much as I could when I was twelve years old and it was everywhere. Um, then I remember mowing a lawn one day, borrowing the tape from my neighbor and loving it. And I love the guitar work on it. I love that it was I love this whole image he had after I got into it. And my appreciation for Prince just grew from there. I, but I always kind of, you know, especially when I was, you know, in my teens, I always identified him with this era, this 1999, Purple Rain, the image you see, purple, his hair up like the way it is, the, the playing guitar, lots of leads, stuff like that. And as I got older, I started to really appreciate the albums that were the weird ones, you know. I love the singles. Uh, Raspberry Beret might be my favorite Prince song or one of them. Kiss, I absolutely love Kiss. I, I learned to really appreciate Around the World in a Day and Parade and Sign of the Times and Love Sexy and the earlier stuff, Dirty Mind. Controversy recently has been just rocking my world. But um, I kind of, I don't play this album, The Gateway, the one that got me really into them. I think it's the same thing as, what was the one I was just talking about? Replacements, where it's just, just like I played it to death. I know it too well. I'll play it sometime soon though, and I'm guaranteed I'll probably you know knock my socks off. Oh, oh, these hurt. New Terminal Hotel. I was obsessed with this band. I turned multiple people onto it. How did I get into them? I read a review of this record, basically saying these records never come along. They don't come along very often. And it, I think the writer is in the Minneapolis City Pages. I think they compared it this album to Pearl Jam, which seems kind of weird, but something that people are going to obsess over and really pick up. And it's and I went to the Electric Fetus, which is a huge record store and very well respected in Minneapolis, and they didn't know what it was. It had just come out. I hadn't heard a note, bought it, instantly loved it. Oh my God, such a captivating record. All of it. I mean, I saw them live in 1998, and it was like almost scary how intense it was. And people were coming up to Jeff afterwards and telling him that they that he just made their favorite album the best album they've ever heard and you could see him uncomfortable with it you know and it's no wonder he kind of faded away i don't think he could handle it and never really fouled this record up absolute classic love it almost feels like a different time though i don't know i don't i, don't, I haven't played it maybe once in 15 years but that'll change sometime music comes around you haven't heard it I don't know some people love it absolutely love it become one of their favorite records out of all time other people just scratch their head and cannot figure out why in the world people like this record I love it I just don't play it very often okay this is another one that's gonna surprise people since they're like one of my favorite bands if not my favorite band a band that was very pivotal to me when I was a kid 
Automatic for the People. I love, love, love this album. I got an advanced copy of it from a radio station where my friend worked when I was in college. And I remember I listened to it on headphones. I was in a really, really dark period of my life, too. Just things, things were kind of dark. And uh, I remember just obsessing over this record and, and thinking my first thought was that they've gone to a whole new level. Like they were no longer this indie, you know, indie rock kind of alternative band. I mean, I would, you know, I never really, I love, I love all REM records, but out of time, I don't know. I didn't, I felt like it was, they were, it was, I felt like it was not like breaking new ground. Like this one was this, this album to me sounded like they reached the upper echelon of record making that this was something on par with like a Led Zeppelin record or a Rolling Stones record that they had really graduated like holy shit is this good it also sustains the mood incredibly well I mean yeah I've got Ignore Land and that's that other uh, Sidewind, Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight that kind of interrupt the flow a little bit absolute masterpiece though love 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 this album but I just I you know it's weird I savored it from day one I didn't play it that often I respect it more than I play it. Part of it though too is I didn't want it to get old. I wanted to be able to listen to this and hear all that beauty and not have it be overexposed and get old. I almost sometimes get annoyed when I hear like the singles on the radio because I'm just not, I, I want to hear it on my own terms. Um, I played it last Thanksgiving and it sounded amazing. Um, of course, I love this album, but I very rarely play it, especially for, you know, one of the best records by one of my favorite bands. I think that's it, but there's an honorable mention here. And that is a record that uh, got me into Tom Waits. I don't have on vinyl, I had it on CD, and it's getting re-released on vinyl, which I'm super excited about. All the Island Year records are getting uh, re-released. This is the one I'm getting really excited about. Rain Dogs too, you know, definitely looking forward to Rain Dogs. But Bone Machine, Bone Machine, Bone Machine, Bone Machine is the record of Tom Waits that I just absolutely love. You know, it got me into Tom Waits. I love the darkness of it. I love the experimental sounds of it. I love a song that just fucking rocks like going out west. You know, I don't want to grow up. I mean, yeah, it's been a little overplayed. I was living at home at the time and uh, I was playing that album obsessively. And my mom was like, what is that hurdy-gurdy, growly guy you're listening to? And I'm like, Tom Waits. She's like, what's that song you just play? I'm like, uh, I don't want to grow up. And she's like, yeah, that ought to be your theme song. I'm like, ah, thanks, you know. But uh, I love that record. I love Bow Machine, and I just do not listen to it. Uh, part of the reason is when I switched over to vinyl, um, started buying a lot of stuff, I couldn't find that. I'm not going to, like I said in other videos, I'm not going to spend, like, no, 150 bucks or 200 dollars for a copy of a record i'm just not um but it's coming out and i'm super excited about it. but bow machine i love love that record a little rain going out west that feel the song with uh keith richards earth died screaming dirt in the ground the whole thing i i, I just think is phenomenal but i haven't heard it in years that's going to change for sure we'll see how often i play it it might be one of those things that's kind of savored but i felt like it uh, something I kind of savor, but I felt like it met the definition of this video. So those are mine. I would love to hear yours. Is it a case sometimes where you just like you've heard things to death or you want to savor them? Um, or you just, I don't know, for whatever reason, one of your favorite records or something you really like, you just do not play. Um, there's a lot of records I just don't play it that I have that I should probably get rid of. But these are definitely not those records. But uh, anyway, thank you. And please subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate that. And yes, leave your thoughts. I would love to hear them.